Now the first thing I would suggest any fursuit maker or artist to get in their lives is Google Forms. Now, why is that? So if you're not a naturally organized person and you do have a pretty lengthy TOS that most people probably won't read, Google Forms is a really interesting and innovative way to get people to read the TOS and give you all the information you actually need before you can start on their commission or even consider them for a slot. So I'm gonna pull up here a image basically of what Google Forms looks like. So what you're able to start with is essentially a template. You can fill in your business name, a quick description of what this form is for, and then you can pretty much make this as customizable as you want. So what I'm gonna show you here is an example that I actually did for, it's probably Mars. Um, they had reached out to me after the drama download video, um, you know, thanking me for some of the points and, you know, really wanting to work on some of the things that came out of that. So I took a little bit of my personal time and designed this. So as you're going to see in here, um, I've actually built their terms of service into the form itself. One of the big gripes I hear from a lot of people who do either fursuit making work or commissions or do anything on like a basis where they're like basically working by themselves and they have to handle a lot of variables is the common complaint that not every customer reads the TOS. So here is a clever and innovative way to essentially force people to read your TOS. Build it in little chunks throughout the commission form itself. This way, they're actively thinking about the limitations as they're filling out the form. They're not rifling through a massive TOS to figure out exactly what they need to know. This can also deter anyone who might not be a good fit for your commission style or your TOS, and can also help to weed out anyone who's just testing the waters because you can make it as explicit as you want or as light and fluffy as you want. The other great thing about these forms is, you know, you can set different things to be required, not required, optional. So if you are a maker that only services 18 plus clients, you can make it mandatory that the person signing has to either verify that they are 18 years of age or one creative thing I thought of is that they agree to send you a copy of a legal ID or you reserve the right to contact a parent, guardian, or trusted friend whom, you know, can vouch for their credibility. So in the instance where, you know, maybe they're not 18, but their parent would like to place the order on their behalf, you have much more security and you are not dealing with 13 year olds posing as 18 year olds and then, you know, getting yourself into a whole host of issues. So what's also great about these is you can set them to populate a Google Sheet, which is kind of like Google's version version of an Excel sheet. Now this does uh, populate dynamically. So as people submit their um, information, it will populate into this sheet. Um, and you know when you are ready to have people stop applying, you can actually download this sheet and organize it as you see fit. Um, you can also do conditional formatting to show if something is a big order or a small order. And you can do all of the organization that will eventually go onto your Trello or other management service without all your customers actively watching you do it, which is kind of nice. So that way, if you realize halfway through, oh geez, you know what? I really should put this customer in slot three rather than slot five you don't have a bunch of eyeballs staring at you, watching you slide cards around and accusing you of things. You can optimize it before it's public knowledge and get all your ducks in a row before the eyes are all on you. Um, so this is a really helpful tool for anyone who takes any kind of commissions and it is free. All you have to have for this is a Gmail account if you don't already have one just make one for the sake of having this. It just makes it a ton easier. And this is also a great way to collect emails, contact information, so that if you do have a customer that goes MIA, you have multiple forms of contact that you can reach out to them to and verify orders, pricing, ref sheets, anything you may need, or to alert them of a situation such as, you know, 
your fur is not arriving on time, um, there was an issue with the, the uh, base I was going to use, there's some damage to it, I'm going to get you a new base, let me um, do that and it will cause a bit of a delay, I apologize. Any of that, um, you can essentially have all their contact info and when that goes to change on like say Trello or what have you, that person is aware of why that has been done and it makes it much less stressful and dramatic. Now Trello is a great, 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 great tool for anyone who is running their own small business based on commissions and has a conga line of people waiting to go. And you know, it's a great tool in that regard. Now I have seen that some people don't really use it to their full potential. They just kind of make a long line of people waiting. And while that's fine, it could be done better. So here's what I propose. So in Trello, you can actually nest cards under different labels, such as um, not yet started, in progress, complete, shipped, and then you can just get rid of it after it's shipped. Um, and organizing it like that makes a bit more logical sense to me anyways, as someone who's been on the other side of the table and as a customer. So that if someone doesn't understand like why they are a certain part of the list and say someone's fur arrives before someone else's, if you move them, people are gonna know and get grouchy. So here's also what I propose. Make sure you also include labels of some sort when incidences happen that cause a commission to be late, such as materials on delay, payment not um, fully paid off, um, I can't think of anything else. Basically, if they don't pay on time, have a label for that so you know people can understand like why they are not being moved forward as quickly as others. If your materials are stuck in transit, if someone needed a special fur from a special place and it's taking a special amount of time, have a label for that. Additionally, if there is an issue and something needs to be refunded, I mean, it always sucks to have to do that, but you know, if someone's grandma dies and they can't make the last part of their payment and you know, you have to refund them or what have you, make sure that you have a label for that so that other people watching the Trello board, because trust me, other people will watch, know exactly what's going on and don't start nonsense on the internet about why Trello cards are moving. So that is just my two cents on there for Trello cards. If you wanna do a long conga line with no labels, I mean, that is your choice, but this is just one way that you can do it in a slightly more organized manner that makes more logical sense to both you and your customers and can quash a lot of beef before it even starts. Now, sorry for the camera quality, guys. Unfortunately, I got off work really late, so I wasn't able to film during the daytime, but I did want to speak about something that happened pretty recently that wasn't ideal. So as some of you may know, and as you might have heard in the earlier part of this video, I actually have been helping It's Probably Mars with some organizational tools, um, such as the Google Docs that I mentioned, that was um, the big, or sorry, the Google Forms that I mentioned, that was like a big one. And that was meant to help organize Mars in a way that, you know, they could really keep an eye on commissions, status, get all the information that they needed to deliver the best product to a customer, as well as prioritize before things hit the Trello board. One of the things I see a lot amongst a lot of fursuit makers is they'll go to make edits to a Trello board and it'll send people into a tizzy because either, you know, they put a card in the wrong spot or there's been a status change, fur is still in transit or someone has not paid off in full or you know, an extenuating circumstance has caused something to move up in line other than something else, such as you know, some issues with payment, some issues with materials, some issues, or some, basically anything. Basically anything that causes a card to move usually sends furries into a panic mode. So one thing I wanted to do was give them a solution that allowed them to organize before they even set up the Trello board and before they even got to their next step. Now, as a thank you for me making that Google form and Excel sheet, Mars decided to make me fan art, which was very nice of them. Now, this also sent furries into a tizzy. Oh, God. 
because apparently people saw it as Mars prioritizing the overpaying customers, which I just want to come out and say it. I did not ask. It was a surprise. It was unbelievably nice of Mars to do that. And it should be noted that Mars sent me that photo at one in the morning Eastern Standard Time, which is Mars's time zone, on a Saturday. So it was definitely well past their working hours or the hours in which they do commission work. Some people got all pissed off about this and said, you know, that time should be reserved for catching up on commissions and, you know, whatever. But I do want to point out that I did speak to Mars and they actually have been violating their own, um, you know, hours of work rules that they set for themselves. They have been doing a lot of commission work on weekends for people who are currently paying customers, albeit not at one in the morning, <laughs> but they are doing that. And I got some comments that were less than great. Um, I'm going to go over some of those now. So the most interesting comment I got was from this user who basically left a tirade on my comments of my drama download, basically saying that my video was now invalid because Mars and I were friends and they respected me before and they no longer respect me as a YouTuber and that kind of hurt and it also kind of made me mad. Ragehound is not just a moniker, there is a reason I have that name. Why? Well, because I did this. I basically responded in the comments and then on Twitter with a series of really angry tweets, which may not have been the most professional thing to do, but you know, you can call me names, you can insult my characters, you can say that Heli looks like nightmare fuel, you can say that Cupcake looks stupid, you can tell me my persona, persona designs violate color theory and that they're an eyesore, and gen, generally I won't get that annoyed. But when you come after the integrity of my channel, that does make me kind of mad. So one thing I did want to clarify here is that you know when I do drama downloads the purpose is not to outwardly shame the person involved. I do try to maintain a neutral, unbiased, and informational stance. Now in cases like Toxic where I did actually have a personal connection to the person involved, I did my utmost best but admittedly like that situation was very hard for me to report on because you know it is a friend. In the case of Mars, I actually had no communication with Mars prior to that video. We did not talk. We did not discuss the fact that video was going up. I kind of blindsided them with it. I was not nice in that video. I mean, I was unbiased. I was neutral, but I wasn't sugarcoating by any means. I screenshotted instances where holes were found in suits. I showed the discussion. I showed comments Mars had made, probably not wisely, about, um, you know, their customers. And I had also shown, you know, screenshots of what their girlfriend had said to others. If you want to see those specific screenshots, those are in the um, drama download, which I will link below just for your reference. Um, additionally, you know, when I had made that, I fully expected Mars to be angry with me because I basically called them out and call out culture is something in our fandom that is not genuinely looked well upon. So I, I was I was expecting a different reaction. What I got was someone taking criticism very professionally and asking for help with solutions to help them essentially fix some of the mistakes that I had mentioned and that other customers had brought to light. So what I did is I helped because drama downloads are not bewares. They're informational updates on things that happen that involve furry drama, but they're meant to educate the community on things that happen that, you know, they might have missed. I do plan to do some others in the future. I have a couple pending because I'm not sure if I want to do them or not because of the delicacy of the situation but essentially those are supposed to be like news bulletin updates on drama so i basically was not expecting fan art <laughs> at all i wasn't expecting them to even message me and i had planned to interview mars 
to discuss some of the points in the video. Unfortunately, situations didn't work out. I wasn't able to do that. So instead, what I did was I just tried to help them out as best I could. So naturally, you can understand my confusion and annoyance when the furry community decided rather than to you know give them the benefit of the doubt and see that they were creating that art well past work hours. I have a screenshot that shows the exact time I received it, um, you know, up here so you can see it. And they pretty much decided to go on a brigade. Um, Beware Mars's page addressed this as well, basically saying that, you know, the art was made after hours, so understandably, you know, it was made in free time, so, you know, when an artist is off the clock, it's understandable that they might draw personal art or things that are not paid for at those times. I don't know, I'm not an artist. But a lot of people felt personally attacked and I did actually invite the commenter to speak with me on Telegram and what I noticed, and I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna caveat this with this is what I interpreted from this exchange. If you see something different there, by all means, feel free to take it as you will. But what I saw was someone whose tone and whose candor still didn't want to give Mars the time of day. We discussed the fact that one of their friends was waiting on a commission. We discussed that, yes, it probably made them upset that I got gift art at one in the morning for no reason except for that I had spent three whole weekends building a Google form for Mars to organize and stay you know, prepared for things. And what I saw from a lot of the language that was being used is there was still a very negative, aggressive, and almost vindictive tone there. And that made me pretty upset because understandably, Mars has made mistakes. I'm not saying Mars is a shining example of perfection. I don't think anyone is. Um, but, you know, they are making changes to the way that they run their business to try to alleviate some of the issues that have been coming up, whether it be suits maybe being rushed or, you know, maybe things being a little less organized than, you know, one would hope, and just trying to bring everything back together and put out good suits in good quality and get them to customers at, like, basically in a reasonable amount of time. That's what my goal was. Give them the tools to improve because, as I said, my drama download was not a beware. So seeing this kind of negativity really brought me down and really pissed me off. I have worked with makers who do not have great organization before and I understand the struggle. Uh, when you communicate with people on more than one platform, when you don't use email as primary contact, when you don't use things that help you stay organized, you are likely to make mistakes. Now, one thing I did ask this person, since they seemed pretty upset that their friend had not received any word from Mars, was to link me in the email discussion, and I would personally see to it that Mars saw it. Now, do I work for Mars? No. Um, am I paid by Mars? No. Do I have any personal affiliation with the person that messaged me, complaining about the fact that Mars had not completed one of their friend's suits or Sorry, I think it was refunded a suit. Nope, I don't have any affiliation at all. I was just annoyed. I could see that they were out to make a point of it. And I asked repeatedly to be linked in the email conversation so that I could direct it to Mars's inbox. Didn't happen. So at that point, I got a little suspicious. And I had gotten a screenshot, but there was no name in the screenshots. So there was no information for me to give to Mars to help them with this customer who was understandably upset. I finally got a name a little bit later in the day and I did pass this on to Mars so that Mars could contain the situation and fix it. But I guess what gets me is that this person, rather than talking to Mars, rather than sending a professional email to Mars, rather than sending a fresh telegram message to Mars, or rather than commenting on Mars's page, or any host of things 
that you would normally do when you have a customer service problem, this person took it upon themselves to slander my YouTube channel for essentially providing a video covering a topic at a time when I did not have a personal relationship with Mars and saying that now that I do, it's invalid. I'm gonna tell you right now that that is utter bullshit. That's bullshit. After the Furry Raiders video, I did make friends with Al Cabone. Now, I don't know if he's still a Furry Raider himself, but I do know that the purpose of the discussion that I had with him in the interview that's posted was to demystify some concepts about that that I did not understand because I did not have a personal connection. And similarly, when Mars wanted to have the interview with me, which sadly we did not have, the purpose of that was to understand what was causing this outrage from the community and I did not have a personal relationship with Mars at the time. Like I did not know them personally. So to come for me was petty and it kind of made me angry. So yes, I, I did have a bit of a tweet storm and if that annoyed anyone, I am extremely sorry. But it's that kind of thing that really makes me angry and it makes me really almost ashamed to be a furry sometimes that that is the way that we deal with things rather than you know taking it right to the source when i had issues with one of my makers i was contacting them i was also asking others for like advice on how to deal with the situation but i was not going onto the comments of every single one of their posts and slandering them or slandering their friends posts or slandering their youtube content or you know, going out of my way to be destructive. That does not help. If you're angry because your maker has not delivered something on time, the best thing to do is to contact the maker directly. If you can't reach them on Telegram, send them an email. If you can't reach them by email and you have their Facebook information, send them a message. If, and if any of those don't work, then you can ask one of their personal friends, hey, What's the best way to contact this person? Don't go on their friends' pages or people you know who know them and just blast them. In my case, I didn't really know Mars at the time, but don't go onto my video that is giving honest, unbiased reviews and blast me because you're mad that I got gift art. That's so petty. So petty and unnecessary if the thing you're most mad about is a customer service related question that I can't help you with, but I still offered to because I could see that you were upset. I don't know guys, that is my little bit of shade on this topic and kind of why I provided the doc to Mars and like this is why I got the gift art. So anyone being like, oh my God, it's cause you're pop you fur. Nope, actually the reason I got the gift art was spending a good eight or nine hours designing a Google Doc, sorry, a Google Form that had Mars's TOS and all necessary information I could think of that they would need before a commission set up so that it would dump into an Excel sheet, they could see it all in one place, organize it however they wanted, and then put it into a Trello board so that customers were not getting petty with one another about why their cards were being moved. That's it. That's the whole story. So I just wanted to clarify that for anyone who was wondering why I felt it necessary to make this video and to also make a small mention of this because it happened, I was very annoyed, and I would like it to not happen again. Please have thoughtful discourse in the comments and enjoy your week. But if you're going to challenge my channel's integrity, Maybe don't, unless you have very strong evidence, and that was not. Anyways, have a lovely week, all of you guys. Bye-bye. Shadows fall over my heart. I break up the moon. I wait for you to come around.